you ever wondered who the woman behind the great Alexander was? What kind of woman could raise a world conqueror? Today, we delve into the life of a woman whose name resonates through the annals of history, Olympias. As the mother of Alexander the Great, her influence was vast, and her power, formidable. From her rise to prominence to her ultimate fall, her story is rife with intrigue and resilience. Prepare to uncover the life of Olympias, a woman of power and resilience. Olympias, originally named Polyxena, was born in the kingdom of Epirus in ancient Greece. The year of her birth is thought to be around 375 BC. She was the firstborn child of King Neoptolemus, making her a princess of Epirus from the day she opened her eyes. Her family, the Iacidae, were not just any royal family. They traced their lineage back to the heroic figure of Neoptolemus, the son of the legendary warrior Achilles. This lineage bestowed upon Olympias the blood of heroes, and perhaps foreshadowed the extraordinary life she was to lead. Raised in a world where power, politics, and pedigree were paramount, young Polyxena was taught to navigate the complex webs of aristocracy. The lessons she learned in her early life would later serve her well, as she rose to become one of the most influential women of her time. She was not just a princess by birth, but by demeanor as well. Her royal upbringing instilled in her a strong sense of confidence and ambition. As a young girl, she would have been educated in the arts, philosophy, and perhaps even the rudiments of politics, preparing her for a life in the public eye. From a young age, Olympias was destined for greatness. Her lineage, upbringing, and education set the stage for her roles as queen, mother of a world conqueror, and a political force in her own right. Olympias's life took a significant turn when she married Philip II of Macedon. In a world where marriages were strategic alliances rather than romantic unions, this pairing was no exception. Philip II, the newly crowned King of Macedon, sought a wife from a noble family, and who better than Olympias, the eldest daughter of King Neoptolemus of Epirus. Before the marriage, Olympias underwent a name change. She became Myrtale as part of her initiation into an unknown mystery cult. The name Olympias, which we all recognize today, wasn't adopted until later. It's believed that she took on this name as a nod to Philip's victory in the Olympic Games of 356 BC. A victory of such magnitude deserved recognition, and what better way than to have your queen bear the name of the prestigious games you've conquered? Philip and Olympias's marriage, though politically motivated, was a significant event. It marked the union of two powerful families and set the stage for the rise of an empire. It was within this marriage that Olympias gave birth to Alexander the Great, a man who would one day conquer much of the known world. This union set the stage for the birth of one of history's greatest conquerors. Olympias, now a queen, was on the path to becoming a central figure in the annals of history, shaping the world in ways that still resonate today. Olympias's influence on her son Alexander cannot be understated. As the mother of one of history's most celebrated conquerors, she played a pivotal role in shaping his destiny. Born to Olympias and Philip II, Alexander was not just a prince, but a student to his mother's ambitions and beliefs. He was a testament to her strength and resolve, molded by her guiding hand and strategic mind. Olympias was not merely a figurehead in Alexander's life, she was a catalyst, a driving force. She instilled in him a sense of divine purpose and destiny, fostering his ambition and fueling his determination. Olympias was known for her fierce character and her unyielding belief in the divine ancestry of her family, a belief she passed on to her son. It was this belief in his divine lineage that arguably played a crucial role in Alexander's daring approach to warfare and his relentless pursuit of expansion. When Philip II was assassinated, Olympias swiftly moved to secure Alexander's place on the throne, demonstrating her political acumen and ruthlessness. During Alexander's conquests, she served as the de facto leader of Macedon, further asserting her influence and authority. Her guidance and influence undoubtedly shaped Alexander into the leader he became. Olympias was more than a mother. She was a mentor, a strategist, and an indomitable force leaving an indelible mark on history through her son, Alexander the Great. Olympias was deeply religious, with her beliefs playing a pivotal role in her life. 
Her spiritual journey led her to the cult of Dionysus, an ancient Greek god of wine, pleasure, festivity, and wild frenzy. This cult was known for its orgiastic rituals and snake worship, practices that may seem bizarre to us today, but held significant meaning in the context of the time. Olympias's dedication to the cult was so profound that she reportedly shared her sleeping quarters with serpents, animals considered sacred to Dionysus. This act was not merely a display of faith, but rather, a physical embodiment of her spiritual commitments. The snakes were seen as divine intermediaries, their presence symbolizing the direct link between Olympias and the god Dionysus. As a queen, Olympias's religious practices undoubtedly influenced the court and the broader society of Macedon. Her deep-seated faith might have also shaped her approach to politics and power, guiding her actions during tumultuous times. Through her, the cult of Dionysus gained prominence, its rituals and beliefs permeating the Macedonian court and beyond. It's crucial to understand that for Olympias, her faith wasn't just a part of her life, it was her life. Her beliefs weren't mere philosophical musings, they were lived experiences, shaping her worldview, her choices, and her legacy. Her faith was an integral part of her identity, shaping her actions and decisions. Following Alexander's death, Olympias remained a formidable figure. The power vacuum left by Alexander's unexpected departure from this world ignited a fierce struggle for succession. It was a time of political upheaval, and Olympias found herself in the thick of it. She fought relentlessly for the rights of her grandson, Alexander IV. She was a woman in a man's world, yet she refused to be sidelined. She took up the mantle of leadership, staking her claim in the turbulent waters of Macedonian politics. Her reign, however, was not without opposition. Adia Eurydice, wife of Philip III, challenged her. But Olympias, ever the strategist, successfully defeated Eurydice, further cementing her influence and control. But the wheel of fortune was in constant motion. Cassander, son of Antipater, emerged as a new threat. He was a man who held a grudge against Olympias for the execution of his brother, and he sought to end her reign. Despite the looming threat, Olympias stood her ground. She was no stranger to adversity, having navigated the treacherous waters of power and politics for decades. She fought, as she always did, with courage and tenacity. Even in the face of adversity, Olympias refused to back down. Her life, post-Alexander's death, was a testament to her indomitable spirit and unyielding resolve. She was a woman of power, a woman of influence, and above all, a woman who would not be easily forgotten. Olympias met a tragic end, a stark contrast to her life of power and influence. In the autumn of 316 BC, Olympias found herself in the crosshairs of Cassander, a former general of Alexander and the son of Antipater. Cassander, hell-bent on securing his own power, saw Olympias as a significant threat to his ambitions. After a lengthy siege at Pydna, where Olympias had sought refuge, she eventually surrendered to Cassander, under the condition that her life would be spared. However, Cassander had other plans. He wanted Olympias out of the equation permanently, but he also wanted to avoid the blame for her death. He cleverly orchestrated a public trial for Olympias, accusing her of several murders she had allegedly ordered during her rule. The trial was a farce, a mock display of justice where the outcome was already decided. Olympias was found guilty. Cassander, however, did not carry out the execution himself. He called upon the families of those Olympias was accused of killing. Olympias's life was a testament to her strength, resilience, and influence. From her humble beginnings in Molotia, to her unparalleled influence as the mother of Alexander the Great, Olympias navigated through a world of power and conflict. Her deep religious convictions, her strategic acumen in the aftermath of Alexander's death, and her tragic end, all paint a vivid picture of a woman who lived in the shadows of great men, yet managed to carve out her own legacy. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the life of Olympias. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating historical content.